Okay, let's talk about making folders in Pro Tools. Okay, so to be fair, folders aren't super new. I think they came out with them in maybe 2020 or so. So they're kind of a new-ish thing in Pro Tools, but they're not brand new. So a lot of you guys might be already using them. A lot of you guys might be ahead of me on this one. But I waited a while before looking into folders myself. So I haven't made a video about it yet. And I figured today would be a good time to talk about the basics of making folders in Pro Tools. And so today's gonna be a bit of a shorty video. We're just gonna talk about the basics of, of this feature tool feature in Pro Tools. And I hope you guys like it. So first of all, to make a folder, there's a few different ways you can do it. Like most things in Pro Tools, I like to do Command Shift N and then use the Command key and the arrow keys to toggle between the options here. So I'm hitting the down arrow right now. So you can hit up or down to travel between the options here. And we have routing folders and basic folders in Pro Tools. So we'll look at these two types of folders in a minute here, but a basic folder, my understanding is that's just there for organizational purposes. And then a routing folder, where'd it go? Up. A uh, routing folder allows you to actually see the audio on the folder itself and to affect the audio in some ways. So, you know, in this way, I personally think about routing folders kind of similar to how I think about aux tracks. And of course, the other thing you can do once you have this window open is you can click to choose your options, right? You don't have to use the command arrows like I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna hit create. And then I'm gonna create another type of folder as well. So one thing you can do is you can highlight a chunk of tracks. So whatever tracks you want to be in the folder, and then you can right click on one of them and go to move to and go to create a new folder, or you can move them into an existing folder. So I'm gonna create a new folder this way. And I'm gonna do, what did I just do? I just did a routing folder. So I'm gonna do a basic folder. And there we go. Yeah. And so now when you use this method where you highlight the nameplates for whatever tracks you want to go in the folder, and then you create the folder, this creates the folder with those tracks automatically in it. So if I click on this little folder icon, it's going to then hide away all those tracks. And that can help me kind of keep things visually organized and help me stay, uh, I guess, organized in Pro Tools, right? So. And of course, just like creating new tracks in Pro Tools, you can go to track and then new, and that'll open up that new track dialog so you don't have to use that Command Shift N shortcut to get to this window. So you can also access this that way, and then you know click or use the shortcuts to choose your options. So once you have these folders created, you can see the difference here that I was talking about, right? So there's the routing folder here. It actually has meters. It has more options for like adding inserts and stuff like that. You can actually affect the audio here. So it's actually routing things through kind of like an aux track in my mind at least. And then we have the basic folder here, which you don't have very many options, right? So it's a lot simpler, a lot more uh, minimal in its function. So I have this folder, I don't have anything in here. So I'm just going to click on these guys just for the demo purposes and move them into this folder. So this is folder one. So now it's in that folder and you'll see how when I added it, you can rewind if you wanna see this, but when I added these tracks into that folder, it added this outline here around the tracks. So it kind of shows you what's encompassed within that folder. So if I click this, it kind of accordions it down. I don't know if accordion's the right word, but you know, it hides those tracks that are within that folder. And you know, like I always say, there's always a million ways to do anything in Pro Tools. So another way to, to add a track into a folder is you can just click and drag that track into the folder. So that will also add it to the folder. So now it's within that folder. So see how that works? It added it to this outline. And now when I affect the folder by you know opening and closing the folder, so to speak, you can see that it's part of that folder. And I believe similarly, you can drag them out of the folder. So if I drag here, see how my yellow outline shifts here as I'm dragging it. So that'll bring it outside of that folder for you. And so when you're working with folders and you want to create a new track within that folder, you can just be anywhere within the folder. And then you do command shift N or, you know, track, new track, create your track and it'll automatically put it within that folder. So as long as you're within the folder somewhere, let me show you again here, it'll create your new track within that folder. And so if you wanna be careful not to have your new track automatically placed within your folder, you either click outside of that folder and then create your new track, or what you can do is you can close the folder and then you can be sure that your new tracks will not go within that folder. Oh, let me try this. 
Yep. So that's, I had that right in my head. So even though I was clicked on this nameplate for this folder, it created the new track outside of the folder for me. So that's one way to be sure that you're not automatically creating your new tracks within an existing folder. And another thing is when they first came out with this, I saw someone speaking about this at NAMM that was really interesting. And they were talking about how you can create folders within folders. So that's really easy to do too, right? So if you click so that you're inside the folder and instead of creating a new track, you just create a new folder. So let me do that really quick here. Um, I'll do a routing folder. Why not? So now I have a folder within my folder. So see how this folder has kind of its own little thing going around showing which tracks are inside it. And there's this little break here. So this is actually a folder within a folder. So if I do command equals to switch over to my edit window, uh, you can actually see the indent here. So kind of like when we work with playlisting or we do anything that involves like sub tracks, right? We get this indent here from the main playlist or the main track. And then these sub tracks are displayed here at an indent. So it's showing us what's within our folder, but based on that, right? So if I then take this track and put it within this, this subfolder here, it gets further indented. So you can make folders within folders within folders, and it kind of operates the same way our folders do on our OS, right? So if you're on a Mac, it's like the finder folders, right? You can put stuff within stuff within stuff within stuff. That's an articulate way to say that. Anyway, that's how that is. And you know, just like with tracks, you can rename it. So you can be like, what did I put in here? Something vocals. Uh, a duplicate of a vocal. Um, so I can do like Vox dupes or something. You can rename the folder and that helps you stay organized, helps you know what's going on with it. It's It can be very useful in your sessions, right? So another thing is you can click here just like with any other track and you can change the color, right? So I can make this folder purple and that folder blue. I can make, you know, all my folders that are involved with vocals one color, all the ones that are involved with drums another one, for example. So it can really help you stay organized, uh, streamlined with your sessions. And I guess one more cool thing that's worth noting, maybe it's worth noting, I don't know, is that if you look in your track list here on the left in your edit window, it actually shows you your folder structure. And so here I have my folder, my folder number two, right? And it shows this little line here going down. It shows all my tracks that are within the folder. And then it shows any, uh, I don't know if you would call them secondary folders, but you know, folders within your folder. And it kind of just shows it with these little symbols for the tracks, the types of tracks they are, right? So this is the symbol for aux tracks. This is the symbol for audio tracks. This is that symbol that they're using for folders now. Um, so you can you can kind of see the the, I want to say file structure, but I'm not sure if that's the right way to describe it. But you can kind of see your file structure here within Pro Tools. So that's another thing that's kind of kind of cool, kind of worth noting. And you can also open and close your folders here by clicking on this icon that they're using for the folder. So this little triangle, kind of like a lot of other things within Pro Tools and other softwares, you know, when it's a little triangle, sometimes you can click it and it'll rotate it and open and close it. So they're using that kind of um, nomenclature isn't the right word, but uh, that kind of thing here for you. So you can open and close them from the track window as well. So that's about it. That's all I wanted to talk about for folders today. I haven't been using them a ton, so I haven't dug into them a whole ton. So I'm sure there's a lot more detail that we could dig into maybe later, maybe later in my work, maybe later on this channel. Let me know if you want to do more with folders on this channel. But uh, for now, this is kind of what I figured out and that's about it. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've been using folders, I'd love to hear about your experience using them. If you've run any into any trouble with them, stuff like that. Um, I'd love to be prepared for anything that might be coming, right? And I hope someone out there found this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Noise. And my patrons get access to additional content. I've been really focusing on the Discord server uh, lately. That's been a lot of fun. So we have a little book club on there. We talk to each other about, you know, audio stuff, nerdy stuff. And... Other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday, and thank you for watching. Okay. I'm really excited about this new shirt. It's uh, it's an artist called, I think his name's Persue. Persue? I don't know how to pronounce it. But he's really cool. He does, like, street art stuff. He has this character called Bunny Kitty, who um, is on my pillows, on my sofa. So I'm a, I'm a big fan, and I got this shirt from him at DesignerCon and got to talk to him for a bit, and that was really cool. So... I haven't washed my hair in a while.
Okay, bye.